My name is JJ Garcia and I'm a solution architect at MicroFocus. Today I'm going to talk about uh, data center automation and how smarter patching and compliance uh, can be provided. And today we are going to uh, have a, uh, an agenda. Uh, we will talk about a brief discussion of operational security management. Uh, I know that solar winds is top of mind right now, but it's not the only threat out there. In fact, Microsoft Exchange is vulnerable and actively being targeted by malicious actors. But fortunately, data center automation can manage the risk, vulnerabilities, and compliance. And we will have a, a quick demo afterwards. Let's talk about operational security. Now, organizations are being actively attacked and the attacks are succeeding. In fact, 55% of companies experience 10 or more security attacks each year. 90% of companies have been breached more than once in the last three years. The problem is, is that uh, companies are often being reactive to uh, open vulnerabilities and patching after the fact, after they've been breached. Well, this is like letting the, uh, the cow out and then closing uh, the barn door. So what we need is a better solution. And data center automation can help with this. So like I said, it's not just about solar winds out there. The Microsoft Exchange hack could be worse than solar winds. Now, there are a lot of companies, governmental organizations, and uh, even uh, smaller companies out there that are being actively uh, attacked through this uh, CVE. As a last count, more than 60,000 organizations have been fallen victim to the attack. Now, the exchange server vulnerability is basically a collection of four exploits that are being uh, leveraged by these attackers. In fact, over 30,000 US governmental and commercial organizations are having their emails attacked. Wired reports that tens of thousands of email servers have been attacked. These exploits have been patched by Microsoft, but the security experts say that the detection and cleanup process will be a massive effort. I think uh, data center automation can help here. Let's talk about it. So these vulnerabilities give bad people administrative access to your servers. Through these four uh, CVEs here, you can see uh, the uh, descriptions there. And Microsoft says to patch these, and has made these patches available. But unless they're act act actually patched, the exchange servers are still vulnerable. But this is where DCA comes to help. Let's talk about DCA and what it can do. Now, it's a very difficult job to uh, manage the vulnerability and risk and compliance of data centers. Now, IT actively struggles with to proactively manage uh, compliance and patching processes. There's just too many tools and manual uh, uh, error-prone processes out there, which make a difficult job even harder. But DCA provides a powerful solution for managing these complexities brings together smarter patching, continuous compliance management, and real-time visibility into the risk and compliance state of the data center. In fact, we provide advanced process automation and orchestration so that all of these uh, can be seamlessly automated and uh, reported upon. Let's talk about uh, data center automation. Let's look at the risk dashboard here. Now this is where uh, your current uh, threats and risks can be tracked. Uh, you can see the impact of recent vulnerabilities on your data center, and you can see the age of vulnerabilities. The older uh, vulnerabilities are the ones that are most likely to be uh, leveraged by bad actors. And uh, these are the ones that need your attention first. Compliance management. What you're looking at now is the compliance dashboard. It provides a single place to assess the compliance state of your data center to find out what resources are compliant which, and which uh, need your attention. You can see uh, the top failed requirements and you can see trends over time to see uh, that you are making progress in making sure that your data center is compliant. Uh, we can see uh, the resource compliance by benchmarks and you can see the status of compliance uh, per OSs. Ultimately, you can drill down through these as well to gain detailed information on compliance. Now, data center automation plugs in with OpsBridge, 
and allows you to see the effects of um, vulnerabilities in the context of a business service. You can see that uh, uh, on the right-hand side, we have uh, servers that are uh, listed there. And we present them in a topological uh, view so that you can see the impacts that uh, these have within uh, uh, the business service. You can detect uh, the server OS vulnerabilities and then uh, report upon them and generate events. To sum up, data center automation can assess and scan your environment so that you can understand the risks. We allow you to visualize and prioritize so that you can prioritize the risks appropriately. And finally, we allow you to remediate uh, SLOs and your maintenance windows so that you can uh, do this in an automated fashion. In our demonstration, there are two personas. Salady is our security SME. It's her job to be aware of the threats out there and to create content that uh, provides these patch baselines uh, against these threats so that uh, they can be leveraged by Harry, who is our infrastructure administrator. It's his job to scan and remediate these servers and use the content that was created by Sally. So without further ado, let's get into the demo. Now, we are going to log in as Sally here. Now, when Sally logs in, she uh, immediately goes to the uh, risk dashboard here. And on the right-hand side, you can see that uh, the Exchange Server 2021 is there. And we have no resources that are impacted yet. Well, we're going to get there. So Sally's first step is to uh, click on the Author tab. And from here, you can see a collection of a bunch of controls that uh, are uh, available here. But her job right now is to uh, put together a patch bundle. So she will click on patches. Now you can see we have almost 120,000 patches that are inside of the system. Now we don't store the patches themselves, we store the metadata. But you can, uh, you can easily search through our search facility here. And she put the knowledge base article uh, about the, C the CVEs into uh, the search bar. And you can see there are multiple versions of Exchange that are vulnerable to this. But Sally knows which versions of Exchange are being run in the organization. So she can create uh, the patch bundle uh, that is appropriate for the uh, versions of Exchange that are in the data center. Clicking on Patch Bundles, you can see we have a patch bundle that has been created here. Let's go ahead and drill into it. Now, the patches have been uh, put into uh, this bundle. And if she needed to add more, she can click on uh, Add All Patches. But we don't need to for this uh, situation. She wants to keep it very targeted. So now it's time to create a policy to encapsulate this patch bundle. We have a MS Exchange Server. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click in here. And you can see that we've got uh, benchmarks, patch bundles, and non-compliance actions. We'll discuss these as we, uh, we populate them. So let's go ahead and have Sally click on Edit. From here, you can see that we're uh, giving details about the uh, patch policy, the name, the description, and uh, the SLOs. Now, let's take a moment to talk about SLOs. We have two types. We have measurement and we have remediation. Now, measurement is the amount of time that we uh, allow to stay within the service level objective between scans. Now, remediation service level objective is the amount of time after scan before we remediate that is acceptable and within the service level objective. And finally, we have uh, Windows patching reboot preferences. We can hold all reboots or, we can, and, or suppress uh, server reboots. In this case, we're going to take the default, which is to hold. Now, now we have our uh, uh, MS uh, Exchange server. It's time to add the patch bundle. So she clicks on the plus sign here. Now, selecting the MS Exchange server patches, 
we click add. Now it is included, the patch bundle is included into this policy. Now let's talk about non-compliance actions. What do you do if a server is not compliant? Uh, you could take no action. You can remediate in a maintenance window or you can remediate immediately. We're gonna go with no action right now because uh, this it will be up to uh, Harry to uh, perform the remediations. So now that we have our, um, our patch policy created, Sally's job is done. Her next step is to email Harry about the availability of this. So she's gonna log out. And now let's log in as Harry. Once again, we land on the uh, dashboard. Now you can see uh, one, we still have no resources impacted. Well, we have not yet attached this policy to a resource group. So Harry will go to resource management and he has uh, searched for exchange and found the resource group that uh, contains these servers. Clicks here and now it's time to add the policy. So we'll click on the, uh, the plus sign for policy subscriptions. We uh, can add the policy, but let's talk about uh, policy extensions. Now policy extensions, and you can see that there are four points where we can run operations orchestration workflows. Now, uh, a detailed uh, description of this is outside the scope of this demo, but let's go ahead and click on operations orchestration. You can see that this is where we keep our operations orchestration workflows, and they could easily be attached at the different points. The pre-scan, post-scan, post-remediate, and pre-remediate are all places you can attach operations orchestration workflows. But let's go back to the DCA uh, console here, and we'll click OK. So right now, he has attached the policy, and it's now time to scan our exchange servers. So we click on exchange, uh, on scan, uh, we select a policy. In this case, there's only one attached. And uh, what it has done, it, uh, allow, it, it is drilled into uh, the res resource uh, group here. We're gonna select all servers, and then we click scan. Now, this is going to queue up jobs within uh, data center automation. And we can go to the jobs tab to see that they are running. In fact, we could see further evidence of this in operations orchestration. Go to the run management tab, and you can see that the policy scans indeed were kicked off and they are now completed. Going back to DCA, we could see that those jobs have been, uh, have been completed. Let's drill into uh, one of these jobs here. And you can see that the server is non-compliant. We can drill into uh, the rule name to see uh, details about it. And you can see uh, that the rule shows that we're missing patches. So let's go back to resource management and uh, we can look at the individual servers. Let's take the first one here. You can see that uh, one uh, patch is needed right now. And if we needed to, we could see all patches. But in this case, there's only one patch that is needed. So we can go back to the dashboard. Hey, our Exchange server uh, 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 resource uh, has been impacted. We have two uh, resources that have been impacted by this vulnerability. We can drill in and see the servers that are indeed vulnerable to, uh, to this. Let's go back to our resource groups. Once again, we click into MS Exchange servers. And it's now time to remediate because we do not want to have vulnerable servers uh, uh, available for uh, bad actors to attack. So let's click, uh, Harry will click on uh, remediate. Once again, we select the policy, click OK. Now, now that we have selected all uh, of the servers that are vulnerable, we can click Remediate. Once again, go to the Jobs tab. You could see uh, that these uh, policies are, were indeed kicked off. Drilling in, now that it's completed, 
we could see, hey, we have a, a compliant server. Once again, let's click on the rule name and you can see that the patch has been installed. Going back to our resource management, clicking on the server, you can see there are no needed patches. Now, Harry can go back to the dashboard and see that we have no resources that are impacted by the Exchange server uh, vulnerability. Thank you so much for uh, your time. I hope you appreciated uh, the demo and how data center automation can uh, be used to mitigate threats and manage risk and compliance within uh, your data center. Thank you. Yeah.